Hello students. Today I'd like to go over the L2 PLC2 base supply station program with you, kind of get you started on this assignment. The materials required for this are going to be your electrical schematic, your pneumatic schematic, and you may want to get the hard copy of those so you can follow along. Uh, when we begin to program, we will need a computer with RS Logics and RS Links. Just keep in mind, while we are in the lab, you will be required to wear safety glasses. Okay, the objectives of this assignment are for you to define the I.O. in your program. Defining I.O. is nothing more than assigning your inputs and your outputs so that you can use them later as you program. We're going to need to create an auto mode, which is used to put a machine in automatic. We're going to need to create a manual mode, which later we would want to use if we needed to clear a machine out. And we're going to need to program a reset mode. A reset mode is used to clear a machine in the event something happens that it needs to be set back to its original condition. And an important note here is that the machine can't be in more than one mode at a time. We're going to create a home position and a home position is nothing more than a starting point that all the actuators need to be in before they begin. An actuator is just another name for cylinder in this application. We're going to create a start event and that start event is usually what starts the cycle and begins the machine in motion. Okay, let's take a look at the actual operator panel here. We've got the emergency stop, which will kill all power to the PLC. We've got the power on-off switch, also kills all power to the PLC. And we've got some discrete inputs here. We've got the start PB, which is I20, stop PB, which is I21 and the auto manual selector switch. Now note this is a maintained position so when we turn it one way it'll stay in that position and it only has one address I colon 22 and we have a reset PB which is normally open I colon 23 and O colon 30 is an actual alarm that's on this station and again all of these are considered discrete inputs or outputs. Okay, let's take a look at those that we just looked at on the picture form in schematic form. So if we look at the start push button, I colon 20, we need to really know that this is a normally open push button because that's the way it's actually wired in the field. We need to look at I colon 21 and that's a normally closed push button. And we can see that, that it's wired that way in the field. Okay, the next here is the I colon 22, which is an auto manual selector switch and it has two positions and when it's in one position only will it send a signal to the PLC. In the other position it won't show us anything on the PLC. So next we've got I colon 23 which is a reset push button and again we can see that that's wired normally open. And the inputs which are on the actual actuators are along here. We're going to be looking at I colon 211 and I colon 212 which is the feeder backward and feeder forward. And you're going to see in my programming examples that I've named these to something else. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some information here in an RS Logix program. Starting with rung zero here, I've started what I've called input status checks. Starting with the beginning here, I want to know that my base cylinder is retracted. So I've used the input, I colon 211, which is the actual input on the cylinder that tells me that the cylinder is retracted. We know that it's retracted because inside the cylinder there's a magnet, and when that magnet is in the retracted position, it will trigger the input. Okay, I colon 212 says that the base cylinder is extended, so I don't want that to be, so this needs to be true. And also, I don't want the output to be on, so this also needs to be true. Starting a timer here, so if the cylinder is retracted and it's not extended and the output is not on, the timer will begin and a little bit of time will trigger and tell me that the base cylinder is actually retracted. Okay, so now let's look at the extended portion. So I colon 212 tells me that the base cylinder is extended. I colon 211 says that the base cylinder is not retracted because we wouldn't want it extended and retracted at the same time. And now the output must actually be on O colon 38 
to tell me that the base cylinder is actually extended. I'm going to start a timer when those instructions are true. The timer times out, the done bit becomes true, and the base cylinder is actually extended. Okay, so again, this must be true, this must be true, this must be true. A little bit of time, the done bit becomes true, and the base cylinder is extended. So now this is defining my I.O. And now later on, whenever I want to know that the base cylinder is retracted, I will use this bit, B3 colon 0, 0. And if I want to know that the base cylinder is extended, I would use the bit B3 colon 0, 1. So again, this is defining the inputs, and we would want to do this with every input that we have on the station. Okay, now we're going to look at work bits. We must program an auto mode, and to do so, we're going to use the information from I colon 2, 2, which is the actual switch. Here, this must be true, this must be true, and that would trigger an auto mode condition. So now we want to know if it's in manual mode, so this input must be true, this one must be true, and that would trigger a manual mode. Now I've used B3 colon 1, 1 and B3 colon 1, 2. So anywhere in my program now that I want to know if it's in auto or manual, I would use these two bits here. Notice that these are interlocked so that the station cannot be in more than one mode at a time. So when B3 colon 1, 2 is true, that would make this instruction go false which means that it cannot be in auto mode if it's in manual mode. Okay, the next thing that we needed to do was to create a reset mode. And my logic here says that I must be in manual mode. I must push the reset push button. And as long as this is true, the reset mode becomes true, which also starts a timer. And after five seconds of this timer, this done bit would open up, which would then break the latch. So if you see here, manual PB is true, reset's true, this is true, this becomes true. It also seals in, makes this become true, and after the timer times out of five seconds, this instruction here would open and break the latch. So what that does is it allows me to create a reset mode, and this bit would remain active for up to five seconds. Okay, next we want to create a home position. Home position, again, is nothing more than all cylinders being in their normal or safe operating position, which is usually retracted. Here you can see the information that I programmed, B300, which is base cylinder retracted. And I also programmed some uh, additional input instructions here, B303, which this inspection cylinder would be retracted suction cylinder retracted and body present meaning that there is a part available now this is not all of the instructions that would be required for home position but it's a good idea to get you started and last to create a one-shot event to trigger a start condition we need our start PB so in this logic here it's manual mode or auto mode with an initiation of the start PB is going to allow this one shot rising bit to become true for one program scan only. And for one scan only, this start PB bit would be true. So if I sat here and hold this bit, this instruction would only become true one time, so this bit would become true one time, no matter how long I hold the button. I must release this button, press it again, in order to get another initiation of the start PB. So that's the purpose of a one-shot rising bit. The information leading up to it must be true, and then this instruction becomes true for one program scan only. Okay, let's take a brief look at the pneumatic schematics. Okay, these are our actuators that are on the station. Horizontal cylinder, vertical cylinder, etc., etc. Each one of these cylinders has a specific purpose, but I want to show you some information that's on them. These are the proc switches here on the ends. Cylinders have magnets inside of them, so when it goes back and forth, this sensor here is triggered, which sends the input information to the PLC. Again here, inputs, inputs, and notice there are no inputs on the actual rejection cylinder. And the position verification cylinder here, there's only one input here, so we only know that it's extended. 
Same thing here on this transfer manipulator. We only know that it's extended. And the body feed manipulator. Here we can see we have two proc switches, so we would know if it was extended or retracted. Okay, these devices here are flow controls, which allow us to meter the amount of air that's going out of the cylinder. And these are our valves here. It's important to understand these valves and understand how they operate. Okay, as you can see here, there are two boxes on the end with the slash that go through them. That means that it has two coils on it. So it would take a signal to extend it and retract it. And with this one over here, there's only one coil. So we would initiate a signal to extend the cylinder and the absence of a cylinder would automatically retract it. The same thing here with the horizontal cylinder. We can see that the air would be allowing it to be extended and then removal of the air would, would shut the cylinder off and force it to retract. Same thing here. Cylinder would shift, apply air to it, allow it to extend and then the absence of the signal would allow it to retract. Okay, so just to review, must define our inputs and all we're doing here is creating additional input logic so we have better control over our actual input. So the base cylinder is retracted, it's not extended, the output is not on, timer begins, the timer becomes done, and then that really tells us that the base cylinder is retracted. Same thing for extended. The base cylinder is extended, it is not retracted, and the output is on. Plus a little bit of time, the done bit becomes true and the cylinder is actually extended. And then finally we must create our auto mode and our manual mode, noticing that it can't be in two positions at the same time. We've created a reset mode that's going to lock in and seal in, known as a seal in or latching circuit. It comes true for five seconds until the done bit cancels that. We created our home position, which is nothing more than creating a set of conditions that allow us to know that everything is in its rightful place before we begin. And we've triggered a one start event for one program scan only. Okay, I hope you found that this lesson is helpful to you and we'll continue on as we continue our programming of the base station.